College of West Africa, CWA, in Monrovia, Liberia, and the University of Liberia. He was one of the original members of the International Gospel Translators Project. Why? Brilliant relocated to the United States to continue his education at Allen University in Columbia, South Carolina. He attended Greater Bethel AMD Church, Charlotte, North Carolina, for several years. He had a Liberian community at heart, working with great people to accomplish his goal of making sure everyone felt included. He also, as you see, the program was a member of the Philadelphia Church, Good News Philadelphia Church. I went to that church, and just as you saw Brother Timothy just now, really was well like And listen to on National Public Radio, uh, and watching science fiction movies and TV shows. And if you're one of the cousins, you know that that's where we get our love for Marvel movies, <laughs> over anything. Star Trek, we're in there with him, watching it, just and you wanted quiet, so we just sat there and watched it, and eventually we got to love it, because it was just who he was. Um, so much of my childhood was spent with Uncle Bill and just sitting. He was he was all about making sure that I, would, I would got the best education. He would even find computer games, math computer games, for me to do, and I'm like, I don't want to play. But he made it fun, but he cared. Even though he never really said much, you knew he cared, because he was there. He was always there. If you needed something and you called, he made he made it happen. Um, most of all, he loved to eat. <laughs> and each of us knew him um, differently. Uh, some knew him as children growing up. Uh, when he made people laugh, Rarely, but if he liked you, he put in the effort. He really did. He would make you laugh. He would do whatever it was necessary. He he put in the time. And if he didn't, he never made you feel bad about it. He just 
He just was a little quieter around you. Um, others remember him from his time singing in the choir. Uh, he had a very distinctive voice. And as the light was going out on his time on earth, he became a little bit more reclusive. So he was witnessing in the Walmart with his wife. And brilliant, he met them. <laughs> and then he was very weird. He feels very weird at the time. So wife is tall and rather Deacon Way was short. <laughs> and Deacon Way, when he sees, he's kind of shy. <laughs> but he doesn't talk and he just, he just walk around. But his wife is very active and talking and trying to explain gospel to brilliant. And then brilliant. So he fell in love, he couldn't wait. <laughs> right? Peter is really tall and he couldn't wait, very small, small right? <laughs> and he fell in love with him. And then, as, as they have fellowship, and he realized, wow, oh, how can I still have sin? Right? They showed the scriptures, and Jesus already took away sin of the world, right? The Bible says, because God. He laid our iniquities on Jesus Christ in Isaiah chapter 56, right? And in John chapter 1, John the Baptist, now after he baptized Jesus Christ, John the Baptist, next day he saw Jesus is coming. And then he said, Behold, the Lord of God who takes away sin of the world. Amen. 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 First, I don't know what to say. Somebody here, right? Reverend Johnson Wright. I've done a lot of funerals. But uh, this one really knocked me out of the ballpark. The brilliant were not my friend. He was my brother. When we lived in Charlotte, North Carolina. Matter of fact, we were very close to home, and we went to meet in Charlotte years later. He started going to church with me. I greeted up there I mean. But every now and then, God, in his wisdom, creates somebody like Brigham. Brilliant wasn't an ordinary person. He was a usual and unusual breed of human being. <laughs> he went to Brilliant's apartment. He had a free bedroom apartment at the time. One room was dedicated to computers and music. And the other one for whoever, whoever came by to sleep was his bedroom. There's a quiet guy. People didn't understand him much. He didn't believe in getting into other people's business. Amen. Those of us who understood him knew exactly what the thing was. <laughs> Even though I was the pastor in the group, but I was more outgoing than brilliant was. I went to him one day and I said, man, you're just sitting in this place and maybe you need a girlfriend or something. <laughs> so I thought I found this perfect girl for him. And I called him Kojo. So I said, Kojo, you gotta see this girl. I was excited. Brilliant, I drove up, really look at the girl, he said, Is that what you brought me? <laughs> 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 As a man, I thought I had good taste in women, you know that. She's nice looking. You, I mean, you see everything, educated. <laughs> Brilliant said, yeah, but she's too young. Uh, I don't want nobody who's still comparing clothes for her friends. <laughs> you want to introduce me to someone, introduce me to a real woman. 
You see that girl still comparing her clothes and shoes to her friends. <laughs> Where you got that from? From the more, oh, I'm gonna go buy me some. See, I'm not prepared for that. Yes, and what Brilliant was telling me is that he didn't want drama in his life. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Brilliant was telling me, and I got it. You know, from that point on, I didn't try looking for girlfriend for him. That would be the drama person. When I heard he died, I had to come to Philadelphia to the funeral. Could you? Goodbye. Why attend that demonstration school today? I don't see any program, but this is to show you that was the part of your life that he started. All of the principal worship of Rebecca J. and Wilson. Yes. Yes. And because I grew up on Clay Street beside demonstration school, when I did a disappearing act on Clay Street, I rushed to Brilliant. And to Mania, and what Brilliant? He said, you need a room. I cleaned those stairs and he got in the room. When you want to read the latest classic illustrator in comics about Jump Head, about Aji, really had the comics. <laughs> so I had to go back to catch my read. So we started reading at a very early age. It was the day when I grew up had books. Books, not now, no books. But Brilliant was an avid, passionate reader. So we started doing reading early. My friend and brother, Brilliant Taylor Akalasi. Who are you when they went to your school? <laughs> Blue and white, our glory colors shall yeah, forever be our pride. In our hearts we sing the praises, and our knees grow fire wide. In the wind of our battles, we will always do our best to defend our love and honor till to our the end. Yes. <laughs> We went to the CWA when there was a down there. Well, on the English test, 
And our teacher at that time was the late S.H. Allen from Ghana. He called him to his table in front of everybody and said these words to him. Look at you. Your mother didn't mean you brilliant for nothing. And you are not stupid. So why didn't you do well in this test? Brilliant did not talk back, but he was angry. And he was mad. He just stood with his marble notebook in his hands, looking at Mr. Otto. The 10 or 15 years of war in Liberia tore everyone apart, and as a result, we settled in different locations, but we never forgot each other. In Liberia, your classmate becomes your next relative for the rest of the yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we did not, even though we did not see Brilliant for many, many years, and were unaware of where he was residing, we still wanted to be here today. Our life stories would be incomplete if his name was not written in it. We rejoice because we believe that prayer is home with the Lord. It is not about Brilliant anymore. It is, a, it, is, it is about us. He is walking through the clouds uh, I'm Romeo Bumu Brisbane. Yeah. Purposely, I'm here representing my family and my brother, Eddie Ball Brisbane, yeah. who is in North Carolina. He and Brilliant went to demonstration school, and we used to live on Clay Street. And one of the only things I remember about Brilliant, he tall black guy with the stuff here, <laughs> cigarette in his hand. <laughs> I was a kid. So when he went to demonstration, Brilliant would always come in the yard. They used to play free combo. So my brother just said today, just say something on the family behalf and let us know. And the last time we went taxi to bury another friend of his, that was Abby Johnson. Now this morning when I was coming, I talked with him. He said he talked to one of our friends of a brilliant. And he said, he said, Brisbane, we are sleeping slowly. Time is fast for And he sold her. And so is a particular department. Yeah. On that day, I worked so hard, very tired in my heart. I truly don't want to go today. But I followed the church, so I was forced to go to the uh, go to witnessing. So we went there. My wife and me went to the the walk 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 Walmart. The Walmart, the Chatham Square. So about uh, it turned seven p.m. to eight p.m. At that time, one tall man. Get off from the bus. Uh, and then, the uh, perfect time, we we witnessing in front of the Walmart, and there, he is really. So, uh, my, my wife very tall, husband, me, very short. So, really look at us. Maybe later he told us to feel very funny. Uh, so, the wife talked actively, but uh, husband keep silent. <laughs> you were you drinking. Then we talked together. Then we went to the uh, stable, he took a uh, dinner, now have good fellowship. So from that moment, so we become friends. Then my wife and me uh, keep fellowship uh, with him. Later we have a conference. Uh, almost every every time I pick up him, because at that time John Luke here have no car, so I pick up him. In the car, we continue to talk together about God, about Jesus Christ. So later, uh, from the Bible conference, uh, from the fellowship, he truly he believed, just as the uh, Timothy mentioned, the John uh, chapter 1, verse 29. Behold, the Lamb of God, who took away the sin of the world. So truly, brilliant heart, he received this. He had the faith. Yes. As my sin already washed and water snow through Jesus' blood. So he's very relieved, very free. He's so happy. So I cannot forget. So um, about 10 years, we get together. We every Sunday we get together. Every Saturday, so brother, uh, brother, another loving brother, Samuel, and me, and uh, our elder hand, Timothy, we brilliant witnessing, we together went to Woodland. Because Woodland, there were a lot of Liberian, just at the Chinatown, a Liberian town there. <laughs> so, yeah, we have a good time. We, 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 
uh, house by house, we we really open the door, knock at the door, then librarians have good talk with them, then invite them to the church. So several several family, so through the witness and they connect with our church, they to the gospel. So we have, we have wonderful and blessed time. So in my heart, uh, uh, one is uh, uh, from Lavin, one is from China. But in Jesus Christ, we are one. Yes. Yes. No Amen. nationality, Amen. no uh, yes. culture, no race. Yeah. So we are one in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We are so happy. Uh, last time I testified to Brady's family, uh, Brady is my best brother. Uh, my heart is close to him more than my own, my brother, blood brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have one heart, we can talk deeply, fellowship together. So I can testify, uh, breathing, have the blessing and happiness, happiness year in uh, these last two years. So uh, I cannot forget he, how he quit his move. Uh, he told me uh, from 17 years old, he started to smoke. Yes. So he cannot quit. So since he received salvation, uh, lived secure life in a church last few years, he still struggled. He cannot quit the smoke. That's how he told me. He, oh, he tried to quit. Then throw away the cigarette in, into the trash can. But later, uh, he, he picked up again. <laughs> he cannot uh, stop. He cannot quit. Oh, the, the power drank his heart. He cannot free. So he fellowship with our pastor. He is so, uh, so frustrated. Oh, pastor, I reached away, I cannot quit. Uh, oh, I like a shame. So our pastor Moon, at that time last year, just came to Philadelphia from New York church, help us prepare a Christmas cantata. Uh, I believe God sent uh, Pastor Moon help brought belief. Because Pastor Moon, before he reached salvation, he smoked a lot. One day, two, two, two. Yeah, two packs, one day, two packs. Our pastor cannot stop. But after pastor receives salvation, he has a new heart, new spirit. Yeah. So he automatically has no desire to smoke. <laughs> Uncomfortable feeling, he stopped yeah. quickly, automatically. So our pastor testified to Brother Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, Brother Brilliant, don't try to quit. Uh, everything give to God. God help you, yes. you automatically you, you don't want to design because Jesus Christ don't like smoke. Right? <laughs> Jesus Christ don't like smoke. Then you will quit smoke uh, by, uh, through him. So later, Brilliant told us, I'm quick. Already one week, two weeks. I, I don't want to drink one from one moment. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know how. But he testified in the church sermon. He said, God help me to quit the smoke. I'm hey, so happy. Oh, he go to heaven. Uh, then last year, half year, God helped him quit the smoke. Then testify to the Christ, how Jesus Christ loved him, how Jesus Christ helped him to quit this. So, I'm so happy. Uh, when I uh, came here uh, to speak with him, my first heart, Emotion, I feel very sad. Brother Berlin, why you don't tell me early? I cannot talk with you for the last time. You immediately go to heaven. So in my heart, I feel very sad. You are my best friend, best brother in Jesus Christ. But in the spirit, I'm so happy. Because Jesus Christ already watching his sin. I'm holy and I forget God. He holy children of God. Right now he's in heaven. Watch us. I'm so happy. So he's my spirit brother. You prepare the speech, then I will go later. Amen. Step by step, we
You can make it something. No, I wanna, my tribute is that, I wanna bring some more laughter. So I want, I believe it was either Grant's funeral or some very close relative's funeral. They had a wake at our house in Cosmo. And at that time, brilliant was, brilliant. You know, he used to like James Brown songs. <laughs> really used to like James Brown. And he said, look, the day I die, because we're just sitting there crying and all that stuff the morning, he's like, look, when I die, you don't have to do all this sorry for sorry for crying, crying thing for me. He said, you have two girls at one <laughs> on my head and one on my foot. Wearing hot pants and playing James Brown song. Uh, now I know, I mean, hey, we're in the house of God and we just gotta have a little humor because God sex has a sense of humor. Yeah. And although I cannot sing James Brown song in the in the church, <laughs> and I'm not wearing hot pants, but I'm wearing short dress. <laughs> my brother said James Brown song, right? So, because I can't sing, I want to just say something that happened in the house one time. There was a girl, I would not call her name. <laughs> she had just, my aunt had just taken her in, and Nancy was just learning how to speak English. But that girl had such a bubble personality, nobody could tell Nancy anything. Nobody could tell her she couldn't speak the English correctly. And she knew very well that Brogan um, used to like James Brown. And just like how the, the niece came and said, whatever brilliant like, you know, he will sit you down and you get used to it. She got, she actually started appreciating James Brown's song because of brilliant. So we were, brilliant was in his room and I was in the living room. Nancy came running. James, the song was playing on the radio. She came, she's like, now for the American people, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna say it just like how Nancy said it. Y'all will get it. She's like, Billam, Billam, that's how she called him Billam, and I guess, in fact, that's how you call him afterwards, Billam. Billam, Billam, don't quick, he's in, I don't think it's just a machine. Why you got here for you? When Brenner saw him, Brenner would he had comic books, right? Brenner would get him a comic book. <laughs> most people, most of the boys when they came, Brenner did that. They didn't bother with Brenner. But this, I'm not going to call this other person name. When Brenner gave him a comic, he said, "My man, I'm not eating. I don't eat comic books. I'm eating that." <laughs> Brenner saw that he scratched his head for a little bit. Then he looked at me like, why did you serve my food? <laughs> <laughs> but the two of you walking together, how was I supposed to know that you not together with food? And he called me in the room, he said, I only gave my food to two people, Photo Reeves and Jimmy Patterson. Anybody else want to come, the food not for me, it's for mine. <laughs> <laughs> The next time I saw that person come to it, the first thing I mean, say what brother for? I said, brother eat a long time ago. I went brother eat a long time ago when we were at school together. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, was, that was the other joke that we had. But Monday, April 15th, when I got up, when I opened my phone, April 15th, April 19th, pack up. And I said, this is not a 20, not a 19, is it? I'm, I'm here, I know myself because I was alone in the apartment. So I could shut the phone off, open it again, April 19. So I said, I'm not a brilliant birthday, but if I call brilliant today, you will not answer the phone. <laughs> so why is this April 19 keep packing up? And then I just felt kind of funny all day, Monday, all day Tuesday, Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning, I said, you know, I gave April 19 too much on my mind. Let me call Brenda. Mm -hmm. As I look at the time, I say, oh, I will wait until about 9 o'clock before I call him. So they call me not too long. 
So when he asked me, now call me in the morning, people. She calls me. I said, hello, girl. Hello, so girl. How you doing? And she said, she has to take a little bit. I said, so girl. I said, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. From the front of her phone, I said, Sony, what happened? You do not call me in the morning. What happened this morning? And she said, really? I said, no, don't tell me. And I started screaming. She said, my baby won't. But we lost brother for two. It was since that 2017. When I said, because even in New Jersey, brother myself, they've been in the apartment for a long time. We're always together. He told me one time, he said, listen, you need to send the children to good school. The children are too smart for them to be going to daycare, daycare, daycare. Send them to school right away. If you're a boss, you're a regular school. So I go to boss school and he said, Then he found out Derek. He said, oh, Derek picks up pastor and boss school, though. Send Derek to the same school, too. So I sent Derek to that school when Derek was less than three years old. And guess what? I was paying for their school fee per month. So I said to him, well, that's a problem. Now you got all my money going on in for kindergarten children, all my money going now. Well, they get to college, what will they do? Hey, go away, go back, man. Why are you a little worried about small things? Right? <laughs> so I have a problem myself with your children. Well, the only problem I have a problem when you call him, you will take him months before you return your call. Yes. <laughs> He surprised on January 1st and he sent me messages back to back to back. So Bosco said, oh, this is the most uncle brother has communicated with people. <laughs> the many nights, the many days I talked to my brother. There is not only my brother I talk to, many of my cousins and my nieces will tell me that every now and then I will pick up the phone and call me. Some of them will love me tonight. But I made a promise. Really, I made a promise. You have to call me. He started to get sick about a year ago. Really, I've been sick for a long time. But we didn't know when I was sick. Then, like our brothers said, when I had a problem trying to quit cigarettes. Mm. We all talked to Brennan about the cigarette. <coughs> One thing we all forgot, that God give it, to God take it. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever addiction we have, yeah. whatever problems we have, yeah. whatever dis disappointment, mm -hmm. be it families, be it relatives, be it friends, be it co-workers, let Jesus stand up in front of you. my ward at my office, I got life is too short. And this is before brilliant life. Like two years, I put that on my wall. It's not about me, it's I'm not going into that story. And my story with Brilliant. Yes. I gotta get some of those things. My strength is to be hard on people, to push myself. Tears come to me easily. Most people don't know that. I can be watching a movie, good or bad movie, to break out in tears, especially late that night when everything is quiet. But I remember when Brilliant was born, because I'm nine years, I'm eight to nine years older than Brilliant. So I remember when he was born. I remember when somebody here heard that my was pregnant. I remember how that person reacted. When the boy came, she was happy. <laughs> because at the time she wanted to be the only girl. But we have many girls and there are many females. There are houses that people, even from Ghana, our cousins from Ghana, people from up the river, all over, Salala, you know, live in a house. We don't even know some of our brothers and sisters. Somebody stood up at our mother's funeral and said she lived in that house. None of us knew about it. Okay, but when Brenda was born and he started growing up, Winston, our oldest brother, and I, you walk in Premier from Wilson Road, 
down to split wing. Especially in the rainy season, every little puddle of water, one on one side, one on the other side, would swing him over it. <laughs> well, sometimes we still have him on his shoulder. I was not big enough yet to be carrying Grimmel on my shoulder. But I remember one thing about it. When you when Grimmel wanted to cry, he was, ah! And he, you know, he had that navel, navel thing, and the navel would push out. <laughs> Eventually, that, that went away. And brilliant. going back to when he was born, how he got his name, I don't know if the others know about it. I was told by many that when Reverend Irons, I think it was, she first saw Grimmel, he said, Taylor, that ball was brilliant. He is, I think it was seven. He said, brilliant. That day, they called him brilliant. Like my grand used to say, brilliant. Even me and my favorite, so-called favorite franchise, call me Junkie. That's Junkie. <laughs> Never got the name. But brilliant, I wish I knew, really knew him like the other one. I, I, I spent nine and a half in England and then over here for the rest of the time, so I missed my, my brothers growing up. And when I saw how things were going with him in the latter days, I started blaming myself. As if I had control of it, three months of that, if I was home, I could have had a different uh, influence for my brother. So with some things, it would go in a, diff a different direction that he would have some influence on me. I don't read much. I wouldn't read technical books. So he might have had some influence on me going in a different direction. You know? But it didn't happen with brilliant. Everybody go through half time. When you were not doing so good, I said, brilliant, why don't you come up here? His prize said, no, 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 I'm worried about it. I'm worried about it. And about six months later, he's, we were talking on the phone. He said, okay, I will come. Now, the funny thing, when Brilliant was in Charlotte, he would talk to me. He will not talk much to her. When he came up here, he started talking to the man and not talking much to me. <laughs> it got worse when I started giving him a hard time for the cigarette. Pushing him, pushing him, because I felt I could help him get out of there. Not knowing he had tried to patch the disc and all of those things. He just couldn't break it. I used to smoke in college. I said 20 a day. But actually, Around 10, because I was working, and when I put it down, it would happen, it would burn, I'd come back, I'd figure out the smoke. <laughs> then I started realizing, it took me years of trying to stop and start, stop and start. And I wake up in the morning when I was smoking, my joints would hurt. Mm. When I stopped smoking after three, four days, pain go away. I started again, come back, put two and two together, no more cigarette. I yeah. tried again one time, and it give me a light hit. I said, no, I ain't doing it again. I thought I could help my brother with that, and it just didn't work. But I understand him now more than the 10 years we were together in the house. More now, I've learned more about Brennan. Just looking at his, and uh, Dharma was able to go in his tablet, organize everything in there. We can't get in his phone yet because we don't know the password. Even his password is not like one, two, three, A, B, C. It's this letter. Uh, up arrow, down this. <laughs> I don't remember those things. <laughs> you know, brilliant was brilliant. Some one time, remember I talked to. She said brilliant was bordering genius. I would say he was genius. Brilliant, I'll miss you. Thank you. Thank all of you for coming. Chapter 16. Beautiful for the 22 hour 
and a story of two persons. Read that story and tell me where man goes when he dies. We die by appointment. <laughs> this is one appointment you can never miss. Right. You can never be late for it. You can never be soon for it. You always be on time. I can't come here to preach a sermon for brilliant. The answer is called. That is you. Thank you. When is our time? You didn't know. I need to say. If you're not prepared, it's a time to start to prepare. Because the Lord is giving you time to repent and get back on your, on your track with Him. If you didn't do it now, you have ourselves to blame. Thank you. He believed in God, believed also in me. Amen. In my father's house are many mansions. Well, well. If it were not so, I would have told you. Mm -hmm. I go to prepare a place for you. Oh, yeah. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you will be also. Amen. And whether I go, he know. And the way, he know. May the Lord bless his words and sanctify into our hearts for Christ's sake. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, it is good that he is with the Lord right now. But I cannot see in this world anymore. I was very sad. So I think about, as I see brilliant today, oh, this is not real brilliant. Uh, this is just a shell his spirit was in. Uh, real brilliant, he is already in heaven, he is in the bosom of God. In heaven there is only happiness and joy. So if you go there, you don't want to come back this world. So as I think about Brilliant, ah, Brilliant, he doesn't want to come back in this world. How happy he would be right now. How happy and joyful right now. So as he stay in this world with weak body, so he went through a lot of difficulties. So now he is in the bosom of God and he will be so happy. And also right now he is watching over us, right? So we met 10 years ago. And he received the forgiveness of sin and he was so happy. Because of sin, he worried a lot. So after he receives salvation, he becomes so joyful and happy. So people, they are happy not because of they have a lot of money. You have good car, good house. That's nothing. So you being washed cleanly through the blood of Jesus Christ and becoming a child of God, that's true happiness. So brilliant, he told me many times. Pastor, Jesus, he washed away all my sins away. God bless each one of you for taking off your time.
We know how precious time is in this country to see all of you. It's a blessing to the family. Amen. It's a comfort to us. For as much as it had pleased Almighty God in His wise, wise providence to take out of this world unto Himself the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground. Ice to ice, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Said the spirit that they may rest from their labor. I repeat that. May I repeat it? That they may rest from their labors and their works. Their what? Their works to follow them. Revelation 14, 19. Hallelujah. The grace of the Lord be unto you. And peace from our God and our Father. From the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who we now know that only one will be living. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for each soul that is yet to be. If I don't see you again, I'll see you in heaven. Yes. Oh, bless you, sir. In closing, certainly again, we'd like to thank God for the gift that He has given us on this side of heaven. And how his life has touched everybody here today. It's this woman God thinks so very much for doing things the old fashioned way to come into this temporary resting place with his family. And to all of you who journeyed out here in this brisk weather to show this family that love is what love does. The presence here has been greatly appreciated. It is written that memories are flowers in the garden of the heart. Several of you have received a flower to commemorate this very written thing. Some may choose to take that flower home and place it in a family keepsake. Others may choose to deposit your flower upon the casket from whence those memories have come from. If you choose to deposit your flower, I challenge you to grasp a fond memory. Maybe it's a laugh had, maybe it's a lesson taught, or maybe it's just a warm embrace, but grasp a fond memory. Kiss the flower to lock that memory for forever, then deposit it upon the casket for it to be sealed until we should meet again in the air. Family, as we leave this place, I ask you please be so kind to remove your funeral decals from your mirrors. Please turn off your lights and your flashers. And obey by all traffic laws where you no longer be in the form of a funeral procession. That state the family has organized a continuation of this life celebration over a meal. It will take place at the H&H &H Banquet Hall, located on Haynes and Limefilm Pike. For those who schedule the permit, please go there and continue this life celebration over a meal. And for those of you who would like to do your floor tribute, you may step forward and do, this, do so at this time. Please watch your step as you step upon the platform as the you enter from this side and next to the left.
When tomorrow starts without me, and I'm not there to see, if the sun should rise and find your eyes all filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today, while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you love me, as much as I love you, and each time that you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand and said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I'd have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But as I turned to walk away, a tear fell from my eye for all my life I'd always thought I didn't want to die. I had so much to live for, so much left yet to do. It seemed almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the yesterdays, the good ones and the bad. I thought of all the love we shared and all the fun we had. If I could relive yesterday, just even for a while, I'd say goodbye and kiss you, and maybe see you smile. But then I fully realized that this could never be, for emptiness and memories would take the place of me. And when I thought of worldly things I might miss come tomorrow, I thought of you, and when I did, my heart was filled with sorrow. But when I walked through heaven's gates, I felt so much at home. When God looked down and smiled at me from his great golden throne, he said, this is eternity and all I've promised you. Today, your life on earth is past, but here life starts anew. I promise no tomorrow, but today will always last. And since each day is the same, there's no longing for the past. You have been so faithful, so trusting and so true. Though there were times you did some things you knew you shouldn't do. But you have been forgiven and now at last you're free. So won't you come and take my hand and share my life with me?